guys. I'm Dr. Lerato Khadre, and I'm the founder of Young Medical Doctor. And we're here to have a conversation about what it means to become a healer, not just a healthcare professional. South African health professionals are under enormous amounts of pressure every single day. And one of the greatest challenges facing the sector today is not merely whether we have universal healthcare or not, but rather whether we have the human resource available to serve the patients of South Africa. Here at Becoming Healers, we want health professionals to take a journey to ask themselves what it will take to be more than just a health professional. Every day you are faced by an environment that requires more of you than what you have available to offer. And through conversation, we want to engage peers from different industries to understand what the journey would be to become healers. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Randy Lampel, AKA Dr. Motivation. I'm an obstetrician and gynecologist in training. I'm a first year registrar at the University of Pretoria. Here at Young MD, I am the chairperson of Young MD Cultivate, which is the mentorship program for young junior doctors in Southern Africa. In my spare time, I'm a motivational speaker. Um, I pride myself in my versatility. And my catchphrase for all of you is to catch the joy. Hi, my name is Dr. Lomsha Dostembile Apalayan. I'm a wife, I'm a mom, and I'm an academic in training. I work at Krisani Baragwanath Hospital. I'm all about registrars, interns, and everybody enjoying the space that we're working in. I'm currently the registrar coordinator, and all I want to say is life is great. Enjoy it. The idea of the show is to provide a space where health professionals can have conversations about the challenges facing them today. One of those greatest challenges being that they are professionals with a skill that has equipped them from the skills perspective, but not necessarily enabled them to be able to immerse themselves in the South African healthcare sector that faces them today. We're suggesting that there are tools and skills available that we didn't learn in university, but that are required for us to be healers in the space. The format of these conversations is going to be highly informal, but very directive. Our aim is to have professionals from across different disciplines engaging on some of the skills and tools that are not readily available or that they did not receive from simply getting their degree. Our structure will be to go through a journey of helping each professional realize where they are, reconcile with what the sector looks like today, re-educate them about what it looks like to move forward with this new perspective, and then release them to become healers. Hi ladies, welcome to the show. Hey! <laughs> so happy to have you. You all are healers currently working in the South African healthcare sector. Mm -hmm. And you have bags in front of you that we asked you to bring. Mm -hmm. So please will you show us what is in your bag? What do you take every day that you think you need to be a healer? Okay, so this is hand cream. I am a surgeon in training, so I'm always washing my hands. So it's important to stay moisturized. Silky soft and silky smooth. Nice. This is my wallet because every now and then you need to run to the store, get yourself some goodies to keep your sugars up and your energies going. This is my stethoscope to listen to patients' chests, make sure that there are no abnormalities in the heart of the chest. This is my student card, which is supposed to be my student card, but that's still in the process of happening. This is my pen, guys. I have lots and lots of pens. I have emergency pens. I have a pen in my lunch box. I have a pen in my job <laughs> box. We write like crazy people as doctors, so a pen is very, very important. Okay, this is my book and my notebook. Yes. So this tells me how to manage patients, what I need to do in emergency situations. Nice. Here's where I write down all my notes, who I've seen, what I need to do. This book is very important, guys. It's glitter. I always leave it on the table and people make like amazing patterns on it. They make smiley faces, etc., etc. This is therapy. This book is therapy for everyone when I'm on call. So it's important. And then I have a catheter, guys. This well, is well, well. hospital property, ah, but it's important because... <laughs> Where I work, it's very difficult to find this at three in the morning. So yeah. I keep it in my bag so that I can manage my patients without the stress of having to run around between wards looking for things. I like that. And then, um, what else do we have? Okay, so I'm going to move to the fanny pack. Fanny pack. In this the is the fanny one that you pack. use all the time. It's all the time. You. It's on me. Nice. It's around me. So I have a stapler because you always need to keep it together yes. at all times. <laughs> okay, and then I have lipstick, guys. I take lip care very seriously. 
things are not going well for you on pool. <laughs> just apply a layer of lipstick and keep it going. So what are the guys supposed to do? Things will come together. I'm sorry, I can't help you here. Zamba, Zamba, as long as your lips are not dry and ashy, you take it. Look, I even have another one, guys. Wow, like, I take it very seriously. Lipstick is important. Oh. And then I have my sticky notes because you've got to be organized as a registrar in training. You've got to know that. what's happening. Your interns need to know what to do when to do it. And then the last thing is my earphones because every now and then you need to block out the noise and remind yourself why is it that you're here in the first So place. good. So keep Done. That's my yeah. bag. That's amazing. <laughs> so just before um, we see what's in your bag, I just want to let you know why this exercise is important. The purpose of this exercise is really just to prove that there are things that we call tools in our bags that we use every day that truly only assist us as it pertains to being a health professional. But there are softer skills, lighter skills that we need to start to learn to be able to evolve and be the healers that the healthcare sector needs. And we're suggesting that there's a different journey that you need to take. One that will empower you to be more than just a professional who has the stethoscope and the hand cream and the things that help you at the bedside but the softer skills that enable you to become a better individual and ultimately a healer who's empowered to do the work that the space calls out of you. Thank you, Dr. Lampal, for showing us what's in your bag. Dr. Yeah. Lampal, please take us through yours. Ooh, my bag. bag. Yes. <laughs> this is my word bag. Yes. And like Randy, I carry a stethoscope. We like the hearts of the people. Important. Mm -hmm. um, I carry my daily planner every day. I like to try and plan my day as best as I can and awesome. see what I can achieve out of that day. Awesome. One of my faves in my day ones is my Bible. I always carry my Bible because awesome. we work in quite a very difficult space yeah. with quite a lot of sickness, quite a lot of stress. So this baby keeps me connected to God, keeps me connected sure. to people and to my heart. Wow. Nice. And every girl's gotta have a little makeup kit just to zhuzh up a little bit. <laughs> and I'm uh, ready. <laughs> as an obstetrician, you have to have a tape. Guys, this was missing from my bag. Please be advised, I have lots of well, tapes. Just missing today. Um, power bank. Uh, no. Some days are longer than others, yeah. and sometimes you need a little bit more power than usual. Mm. Yeah, that's good. And yeah, like Randy Bazalwan, <laughs> lipstick, lip stuff. Oh, I don't know like, stuff in my bag. There is no way a girl can walk around with ashy lips. Yeah. If you're going to be confident, if you're going to teach, you have to look like you've got it all. Yes. So I have plenty. <laughs> and. Gum. Um, did we notice my balance? <laughs> oh, wow. And student card. Yeah, yeah. no. Important. It is what it is. We're teaching, we're learning stuff, members. Yeah. Hand cream. Hand cream. Surgeons. Dry hands, hands can't work. work. I think this is a guy anything. Yeah, both. I don't know if that's appropriate. Oh, wow. <laughs> I <laughs> have a <laughs> Just in case you know the hour comes. Car keys, house keys, girls gotta roll with something. Yeah. Alright. More lipstick. No, guys, it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about my bag. <laughs> I'm lucky if I have lipstick in my bag. I'm wow, lipstick. we I'm need lipstick. to fix that. Run around with the most. I just like, it doesn't happen for me. Is there anything that you use that isn't in your bag to do your job well? The one thing I can think of that I use a lot that's not in my bag is people skills. Wow. That's the one thing that you need to bring to the party literally every day, all day. People skills, teamwork, organizing things, and just connecting with people, not just at the level of clinically what we should do, so good. but where they are as a human being. Bad day, good day, having fun, not happy to be here, but I'm here anyway kind of day. Just to try and meet people at that level and then jumpstart them to my level. And I try to always bring the joy bring the litness, bring the beast to work. Mm -hmm. So that's always my, where are you? Where am I? Let's try and meet each other at a graceful level, at a, at a beautiful level. That is such that's a my... big, big deal. And I think that, that it, it hits the nail on the head about what we want to achieve here, is to really highlight that there's so much more that we need to bring into the space because the space requires that of us. It mm -hmm. requires you to be a team player. It requires you to be conscious of the fact that you are dealing with people before they are professionals. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I would actually go on to ask, how do you 
teach that? How do you how do you extend that forward? Because one of the things that you said was that um, you make sure you try and align yourself to the idea that somebody comes where they are, you come where you are, and you need to meet at a certain place. How do you do that in such a highly pressured environment? I think to teach such a thing, the one thing you need to do is teach people who they are in the context of the space they're in. Mm. In the hospital, as a senior, mm. it is my role to align with my team. And that's when you need to realize, is someone having a bad day? Is someone post-call and too tired to communicate the best way they can? So I think knowing your role, the leader in this current space, then allows you to say, okay, I am responsible for this team. I am, so whatever weaknesses they come with, we need to acknowledge them so that they can surpass them. So just the basic thing, how was your day? It's enough to find out where are you in the team? Mm -hmm. And in terms of carrying out the task that we put before you, what are the chances you wanna get there? So just by finding out how you are, what are you doing? Where's your registrars often have children and families. Mm -hmm. Just finding out, so how's your child? Oh, yesterday there were this and this and this. And you've just literally elevated their mood and they just are more likely to work better and do better in the spaces they find themselves in. So it's sure. literally, you must be conscious of your role. Yeah, yeah. I am the leader here. I am the beast. The cards in my hands are examples of some of these tools we believe will enable every health professional to become a better healer. What the ladies have to do for me today is select one of these cards and then we'll take it into conversation mode and take them on a journey to realizing, reconciling, re-educating, and then releasing them to be healers as it pertains to this topic. You guys have spoken so amazingly on the challenges that the challenges of leadership that face our sectors yeah. and you've spoken so um, so eloquently on the strategies that you employ to do that. Um, yet you struggle, yet you still find that you are challenged in these places. And so I'm hoping that of the tools that I have here, which you don't know, <laughs> um, we can have a conversation that can lead us to an outcome. It may not be the perfect answer, but at least it'll be an opportunity to take a journey, to have an experience that can challenge the narrative out there, that can make, even if it's just a conversation in the ward round, um, that makes us more conscious about who we are when we are there. Um, so I have cards here and basically they have symbols on them. Mm -hmm. And based on the card and the symbol you've selected, we will have a conversation and we'll take a journey to first realizing where we are as it pertains to this particular tool. Then we will reconcile ourselves to what it means to have it with mm -hmm. us. Then we'll re-educate ourselves about what it looks like to look at our context and ourselves with this tool and say, okay, what does it actually look like to move forward with this? And then we will release you to go and be a healer in this way. So, Dr. Blan, will you please pick a tool for us? <laughs> Number one. Nazo. It's blank. <laughs> <laughs> and blank is forgiveness. It's starting on a clean slate. So, yeah. uh, at Becoming Healers, we are hoping that you guys will be healers who have the courage to start on a clean slate as it pertains to South African healthcare. Um, I chose this one because I really believe that when we exit and we graduate and we're on that stage, it's incredible. The world tells you you're the cream of the crop. You feel yes. like you're the cream of the crop. Well, and then it. you enter into a space that is absolutely frightening. You are not prepared, prepared for. Your degree just isn't enough. And you are also, for lack of a better term, abused by the system very early on. Mm -hmm. You have not learned how to create boundaries. You have not learned who you are in this space. And, and so you carry the pain, not just of yourself, but of the people around you in yes. fixed pain because hurt people hurt, hurt people. Others. It is what it is. And so I want us to take a journey and I'll start by asking one question. What does it look like for you to forgive first yourselves and then the South African healthcare sector for the doctor you are now? So at Young MD in Lerata, as you know, we are very big on definition. So I think before we even talk about forgiving ourselves and forgiving the systems, we need to talk about what does it mean good. to forgive? What does forgiveness mean. mean? What does it mean? Because I struggle to relate with the word forgiveness. forgiveness. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm lost. It's, there's no connection between me and forgiveness. So I need you guys to help me to understand what, what it actually mean. means. And then I can put it into my context. So typically in life, if you just leave the context of yeah. You forgive in a place you've been hurt. You forgive in a place where you require the relationship to continue, but you cannot continue the way 
things currently are. So forgiveness serves as the portal to acknowledging some of the things that caused the build-up to why the relationship is the way it is, to making the decision to decide whether this is a relationship you can continue with, and then building the necessary tools, strategies, boundaries that will enable you to have a flourishing relationship in that space. So if we take the same and apply it to the healthcare sector, mm -hmm. acknowledging that you as a doctor got a degree that empowered you to be a clinician, a skill you loved, you chose, you wanted, ended up in an environment that for all intents and purposes required things of you you were never ready to become. You found yourself in a relationship with South African healthcare not just contractually because they pay you, but because this is the, the only space in the country you can actually excel and become where you want to be. Mm -hmm. And in many ways, this space has dictated how you live, how you don't live. It's taken time from you. It's taken experiences from you. And so what does it mean for you to forgive the sector for the many things it may have imposed on you that make you the doctor who you are today, that can be somewhat broken, can be somewhat dysfunctional, or even continue Continuing on in the characteristics and behaviors of dysfunction that were perpetuated by some of the people you saw practicing medicine. Mm -hmm. I think I'm challenging it with this particular card the idea that for us to heal dysfunction, we must acknowledge it. And we must acknowledge not just um, where it comes from, but who we are because it happened. To forgive actually would it require you, yes, you must acknowledge the relationship, mm -hmm. but then you need to let go of it. Yeah. Then you need to say, okay, this is who we are now. Look at who you could be mm. and then try to walk towards that without holding on to who you were. So you need to then let go of the anger. You need to let go of the shame. Mm -hmm. You need to let go of the old habits of the system. You need to then let go of anything that keeps you in that painful place that we are in currently as the public health system or the health system as a whole, regardless of where you are. So it would literally require you to walk away from who we are and walk towards who we want to be yeah. without looking back and saying, oh yeah, but you did this, uh -uh. we've acknowledged it, we have a new plan and that's the focus, but we can't keep tapping in to the hurt, the pain and everything that looks nasty about it. And I think maybe to, to go back in an attempt to help you, as you said, it's, it's, it's a difficult one, um, is to ask maybe what are the things that we need to forgive about the satellite in healthcare system? You know, what, what are those things that make it so difficult to be a doctor and to transition into a perspective that says, not only will I become a specialist because it's something I desire, but I'm really a specialist who can stay in the public health care system and ensure that it's a functioning public health care system. What are the things that we need to forgive about how we were taught to do medicine, the environment we landed in, that make it difficult for us to choose a different outcome? The one thing I'd like, I want to, I really want to forgive them, guys. They <laughs> lied to me. They lied! <laughs> they sold me the, the whole thing was a lie, yeah. yeah. They sold me textbook sure. medicine and gave me rural medicine every day of my life. Yeah. In the city, you knock out. So yeah. that was like, no! They sold me um, the model of a good doctor yeah. and then made me work with people who have no integrity. Yeah. People who cheat on me, cheat on the system. Yeah. Like, oh, they made me... They told me we are great, and then I worked with people who were not interested about being great, who just wanted to get the papers and get out. Wow. They sold me community and how we are here to serve, and all I saw was people coming to take from the system and get out. Wow. So I want to forgive them for selling me a lie that they couldn't give to me. I want to forgive the healthcare system for pretending to have all the things I need to assist the people I love. Ooh. I love my community. Oh my I didn't become a doctor for the money. Yeah. I married my husband so that I can become a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> that I want to be. But I genuinely, to God, I want to serve. I want to see change. I want to see more women using contraception, more women uh, being empowered about their bodies. I'm interested yeah. in that as an obstetrician. Mm. Like, I want to see less cervical cancer because honestly, it can be eradicated. Mm. Those are the kind of things I'm interested in. But I work in a system or, and I, I, I want to say, even our government, I feel like they don't want to serve my people the way I want to serve my people. Wow. Mm. So I want to forgive them for not having the same model as I, Ooh. that they taught me. I love that. So I want us to go there and say, Yes, Shadow, maybe the model we gave you was not the model we are expecting you to function under. But now that we are here, what are your ideas?
this idea that forgiving them means really accepting that they sold you a lie, that they sold you an idea that they could not live up to. And yep. now you're here with not just a broken healthcare system, but a broken dream. And you are forced to reimagine yourself in a space that you didn't imagine existed. No. And I think that is exactly, hits the nail on the head of what we want to do at Becoming Healers. It's really saying, okay, we, we, we really, we were sold this idea. We, and, and, and to many, to many other people, maybe also they told themselves a story, you know, and forgiving ourselves for our narratives yes. um, and how our narratives don't fit into the picture that South African healthcare is. But we're here now, we're here. and this is what it is. Mm -hmm. And now we need to realize and, and see, okay, this is, this is the disparity, this is the distance. The choice to make here now is, what do I want? Am I going to fight for my version, or am I going to figure out a way where the truth that we can heal people, we can help women, we can help the people of South African healthcare in the midst of me having my vision and dream. Can those two things coexist? Is there a way where, they, where we build a bridge instead of fighting to climb a ladder that takes us away from a place where we're very needed? Mm. Dr. Nafal, so are we better with the forgiveness idea? Not really. Okay, but sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't the know. The bees can't forgive. The, the, can't the forgive. word forgiveness, I don't know. It just does not resonate with sure. my soul. Okay. But um, I'll just speak from you know my state of understanding. Okay. So we spoke a lot about they and the healthcare system and the public healthcare sector. But who is they, and what is the public healthcare sector? My head of department hates it when you say they did this and they did that. It's we because it's us. It's people. The government is people, right. the healthcare sector is people, right. everything is people. So we need to forgive the people basically for Good. selling us the dream. We need to forgive the people for telling us it would be one way and it's another way. We need to forgive the people for the way that they're treating us. And in my mind, I can't forgive someone who's not willing to change, you know? All right. Like I'm forgiving okay. you and I'm trying to walk, but you're pulling me back because you're not changing, you're still doing the same thing. So in my head, I feel like we need to be beacons of hope for the South African healthcare right. system. Let someone see you and say, okay, this is how it's supposed to be. Like, this is what I'm going to take with me. Like, I have an intern who texted me. She was in my student. Now she's an intern. And she's like, oh, my word, I love this new hospital. But I just wish there were more doctors like you here. Wow. And I'm like, don't look for them. Be that person. It's good. Yeah. And someone's going to see you. Then that person's going to be that person. Then we're going to, in a way, change the system. We're going to change the healthcare sector. We're going to change the government because we're creating more and more people like us. More and more people sure. who believe in the vision. More and more people who deserve to be forgiven because they are changing. Yes. I cannot forgive a system that is not changing. I cannot forgive people who are not willing to change. It's... It just doesn't make sense to me. May I challenge that? I love challenge this rich, me. This rich, this Please story. challenge me. Because I enjoy this idea that, that you cannot forgive a person who's not willing to be forgiven. But on the back end of that, I want us to go back to your, your definition of they, which is people, mm -hmm. right? That these people who don't want to be forgiven are people. But I also want to ask, I think, a two-part question. The people who don't want to change, you mean? The people who don't want to change, my mm -hmm. apologies. Are they still there, one? Because for all intents and purposes, we are living and existing in a healthcare system we did not create. So are they still there to be forgiven? And can we truly wait and expect for them to change, for, to, for us to make the decision to live free of the burden of their decisions, of the burden of the structures that they've set up, of the burden of the way that things are run? Or are we willing to, because forgiveness, in my perspective, releases you. Like you don't forgive for them. It's not an impact that helps them. It helps me move forward. It helps me recognize that, okay, you know what? I gave you a lot more value in my story than what you actually deserved. Yes, the South African healthcare system is dysfunctional, but I don't have to remain dysfunctional in it. And I choose not to operate in the way that you used to operate. So that's why I would like to challenge that rhetoric and that idea that we cannot forgive people who don't want to be forgiven because where are they? Are they ever going to come? It's it's. Are they ever going to come up and say, "I'm so sorry um, that it happened"? It's not gonna happen. They are they are not on their way back. So we have a decision now, um, and we're living in the consequences of their actions, their decisions, the way they structured the healthcare system. Our people are suffering for it every day, and I do believe that in order to carry hope well, you have to forgive. You have to lose the ideas that you had about what it could have been, and you have to. To be able to take everybody with you, because I also think there's a, there's a second part to this forgiveness, which is 
yes, we want the one to matter and we want the one to make an influence and an impact on the people around us, but we want everybody to be able to change. So I also don't think change is reserved for individuals who are, who are special, it's for everybody. Anybody who decides they can be better will be better. So how do we help more people make that decision? I just want to go into what um, Randy just spoke about, about the, I said that I always feel, I'm always reminded that every time you say they, it disconnect yourself from the team. Yeah. Sure. And it's the reason problem. I call them they is because I feel like a hurt person. Because yeah. I am, that I'm hurt, That's so true. I want to point a finger. So they, government, they, my teachers, they, but I think it always comes back to, can you see how painful this system is? It even disconnects you. It happens even in the hospitals. What you realize is the sisters will cover each other when something goes yeah. wrong. Mm -hmm. The interns will cover each other when something Absolutely. goes wrong. The registrars cover each other. And then when the story is told, we all say they. Mm -hmm. What we don't realize is that the team has failed mm -hmm. in the function of the day. Mm -hmm. So I think when we forgive, we need to realize that we are so disconnected that we need to stop even looking at each other as separate beings. Right. But we are one whole system. Mm. So there is no they. We have yes. failed. We yes. sold ourselves we a dream. And then That's now so the true. dream is not what it is. And I want to say, you didn't give me what I wanted, but I came with an expectation. I had a vision in my head. Mm. When I got there and I didn't find what I wanted, then it was hard. Whereas then everybody comes in with the same. The consultant didn't find what they wanted also. They wanted interns that were perfectly registrars that were reading and can be taught and don't have lives. So their whole lives run, <laughs> revolves around <laughs> reg time. Yeah. Yet they found people who are mothers, fathers, sisters, um, oh, nice. colleagues. Like they found people who want to be human in the midst of being doctors. Mm. And then that's where we disconnect. They don't want to read. Mm. So how are you gonna help them read better? Can you read and teach and then give them something to read and we come back and meet each other at an intellectual level? But I will always say, until we are just people in the corridors, yeah. how are you doing? Mm. How's your son? Mm. How's your husband? How did the funeral go? Mm. Basic yeah. things like that. Are you okay? Your mom died. Mm. We, can, we will always be there. I love that. I love what you said because I think what you said is, is when we, when we move away from the days, we actually come to a place where we acknowledge it is I. Mm. It is yeah. I who sold myself a dream. It is I who, 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 who did reconcile my ideas of what I was mm. going to be. It is I who misinterpreted what it means to be a doctor. And so maybe it steps right into what you're saying is who are we forgiving ourselves, yes. one, you know, for ending up in a story we didn't write. And many of us, want to be right in the center of the story we write of our lives. We want it to go page by page, year by year, timeline by timeline. And now because it's not going the way we wrote it, many people are faced with the decision to, to steer and change different directions. But the truth is, all of us have the skill to do this and to do it well. So I'm not, I'm not even suggesting That's how we're here. I'm not even suggesting that there is a right or a wrong path, but I am acknowledging that this sector needs us as a resource and needs us to be present there. So now that we've realized that it's us, so you've successfully completed the first R, mm -hmm. <laughs> what does it look like for us to reconcile this thought, this idea with our peers who are walking around they? What do we suggest we? What, do we, what does it look like to reconcile this idea with our peers who are walking around with the they complex? Because we've, we've now sat in this mm -hmm. journey of becoming healers and we've said, no, we're leaving they, we're saying I. Yes. And we're acknowledging that the person yes. to be forgiven yes. is us and to move on from the ideas we had about what it's gonna look like and what it's gonna cost us to be a doctor, to be an OBGYN. But what does it look like to reconcile our now new truth with the truths we'll face on Monday morning when we come around peers who are there? I think, you know that saying that says, be the change you want to see? Yeah. Ooh, I yeah. think, it has to start with you. Mm. You know how you always ask us, what's your hope for South African healthcare? My hope for South African healthcare is that every healthcare worker realizes that they are the beacon of hope. It's good. You are That's the hope. So good. You have to come to work and literally be the person that you wish everybody else could also yeah, be for you. That's so yeah. good. And for me, that's how I show up to work every single so day. Good. I am that person. I'm, I bring joy to the table. I bring solutions. Mm. What are we going to do? How are we going to fix it? The boss is mad. 
but things not working well, I put together a protocol. Guys, this is the new protocol. This is what we're doing. You need to literally become that person that is creating the system the way we want it to be. So good. How do I even explain this? I think now I'm a registrar, so there's a limit to the things that I can do. Yeah. There's certain things that only a consultant can implement. For example, I want to walk into a morning meeting where they say, good morning, everyone. How are the people who are post-call? How are you? Fine, it was rough. Great, let's do handover. Not just, let's hear the stats for yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. People are tired. Yeah. Can we have like a coffee before? Let's have coffee before we start the handover round. Those kind of things. I think in your capacity, what you're able to do, you need to implement well. Be the change within the boundaries that you have now. I and when that. you elevate and the boundary grows bigger, do more in that space. That's so and the higher up you go, you do more and do more and do more. And if each and every one of us are doing something, we are literally going to create the system that we dreamed of, again. what we believed we were going to step into. Unfortunately, they didn't tell us that we were going to have to do the hard work. Yes. But here we are. So you better get your shovel and you better start digging because we've got work to do. Please I do. love that. You know? And I, um, I think one of the things that you said that really, really uh, moved me, especially in your in your lane, just being the change, is that forgiving yourself this next step is actually going back and being the example. You yeah. are the example yeah. there. Yeah. Like to take our forgiveness in action is to go and be an example of what it looks like to live in the truth of a new reality. It's not waiting for the HOD to change. It's not even suggesting to the HOD what he can do. It's you doing what you want to be. Being the example in your space. Sure. And can we this just take so a minute true. to celebrate you for being a part of that? Yes. 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 That's good. Like, can we so celebrate good. that? Because yeah. that's so important. And I think what you alluded to was that there aren't enough applause, not even amongst each other. Sure. There are not enough applause. There yeah. are not enough spaces where we say thank you to doctors. Um, I was actually on Facebook the other day and somebody reshared a post from the Harding Department of Health and they were celebrating how um, multiple hospitals, I think it was George Makari, Helen and the Gen, had managed to successfully transplant an HIV patient, if I'm not wrong. Oh, yes. And so, I reshared that and I said, you. you know what touches me about this post most is that its caption is major shout out to something like that. And I said, you know, dear H, I wish you would continue with the shout outs, but I wish the shout outs would be for the littlest things. Yeah. I wish a major shout out would look like, good morning, South Africa. Thank you to all the doctors, nurses, porters, receptionists who spent a night away from their families to serve you. Mm. You have done so well. Mm. It's so important to acknowledge people mm. for their attempt. Because what we're saying here is it's hard. It's really hard to do this. And my little may not be best for you, yeah. but it's the best I could do today. Mm -hmm. And I showed up and I made a difference. Um, and definitely we need the spaces where we're shaped and we're challenged, but acknowledging that we won is just mm -hmm. as important. So well done, I think. And can I tell you what that does? When you are encouraged for doing great, you just want to do more. You're like, oh my mm -hmm. word. They realize that I'm running this unit well. They I'm going to show me. them next week, it's going to be more fire, you know? But every time you show up and you've done so well, but they're picking on the things you're not doing well, it's just like, what's the point? Yeah. Let me just be as basic as the next ridge because we're all getting shouted at. I'm in the same boat as them, there's yes. no point. So it's so important in your capacity where you are to celebrate. I always celebrate my interns. I always post them to say, oh my word, this great intern, yeah, yeah, yeah. look at what she's oh, done. Yeah, you she literally put me. syringes in a bag. I'm like, girl, you're organized well. Done. Um, excellence for the day. Do you think she's ever going to do another call without doing that? Never. Every call she's going to have that ready because she knows that she's celebrated when she does that. She's appreciated and she's making a difference. So in your capacity, like um, Nom Shadow, she's got registrars and interns and everyone's under her. She can do so much more, you know, with those people, celebrating those people. So I think celebrating excellence is so important. Um, I had an intern on call yesterday who made a box, we, we take bloods every six hours, every 12 hours. So she made a box with all the blood forms ready, all the little packages with the syringes ready so that you don't need to run up and down looking for it. 
And so I posted it to say, this is so amazing. This is so excellent. We're celebrating this. Yes, we know her, Kelsey. And Kelsey, <laughs> yes. So Kelsey. the more you celebrate people, the more they want to do, the more they want to serve you. And you kind of challenge them to say, oh, you thought that was good. I've got more up my sleeve. And they keep on yes. bringing more to the table. As opposed to when you find the faults in what people do, they kind of just lower themselves down. They think, okay, I'm going to get in trouble anyway. So might as well be basic, like just the other age. Ugh, anyway, even when I do my best, it's not good enough. Let me just be basic. So the more capacity you have, the more people you can celebrate. Like intern of the year or register of the year, yeah, register of the season, intern of the of season. The those kind of things. And when you celebrate the qualities in that person, other people will see that and say, oh, is this what they want? Is this what oh, it looks like to so be nice. an excellent rich? Oh, okay, there's this box thing. I didn't even know you can make a box. That's a great idea. Let me do that as well. So we can lead in that way and teach people what it looks like to be a healer in the system in that way. Randy, I really like what you said there because I think it helps us enter into the next segment, which is re-educating. And this idea um, that especially this idea of tools, for me, what you said really suggested that there are also really amazing personal qualities that people have and bring into the space that don't often get highlighted, but that help them and assist them greatly in doing their jobs well. And it's more, more a thing of as you, as you become more yourself in the space, as you recognize that there are things you can add, uh, your, your natural knack to be organized is really teaching people who don't know how to figure that out on a personal level, how to do things well. Um, and so I really want to talk about what does it look like for us to then, beyond being an example, help re-educate the people around us. You make an example of your intern, Kelsey, who really, just by being herself, mm. was teaching interns how to do it better. Yes. And now there's going to be word on the streets that, you know, when you're on call, you can do this. I remember box. we had an intern who, um, when we were interns, anytime she was on call, she would write her IN number um, and her... Yeah, you know, we know her. <laughs> she and every time every time we saw that we were like no guys every time i get a minute i'm just going to prepare my form so that yeah. when the round comes i'm just ticking what the consultant wants and i yeah. and i go and i do it and it makes work light when you have strategy yes. so what are some of the strategies we can suggest that can serve as a re-education in this theme of removing they um, from the conversation and acknowledging that there are things that we need to forgive about ourselves, things we need to reconcile about the way we think about things, removing that they complex and then teaching ourselves and re-educating people around us on how to be better at being an I in the system and acknowledging that you are part of the system. I think to re-educate, as much as we are a community of doctors, unfortunately you have to also start, you have to start with the personal journey. Mm. I think Randy touched a little bit on personal development. And I've been going through this um, path or journey where God is saying to me that until your cup runneth over. Mm. So we need to raise a generation of doctors that have a cup that runneth over for the system. Wow. Mm. So wow. people need to go back onto the drawing board and wow. look at themselves. Who am I? What do I have? And what can I give? So we need to go back into t not even just your clinical skills, which can be refined and right. be, 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 be bettered every day, mm. but your personal skills, your ability to organize, how can you share that with this team so that this place functions a little bit better? Your people skills, are you the one who's good at creating a good mood in the team? Then give that to this team. Yeah. So we need to stop making doctors like all they can give us is their intellectual capacity that the person that we need to say you can give us the person that you are mm -hmm. are you good with jokes you know how tense it can get in a word round mm -hmm. obviously not in a disrespectful way but <laughs> yeah. you know how tense it can get yeah. when there's a lot to do and there's not enough of us so throw in a quick joke there so that everybody just remembers that we're here it's gonna be all right you know mm -hmm. if you're a prayerful person let your team start with the prayer before you guys start your call. Address your team with the prayer. Like we need to bring different things about ourselves into the space that we are working in so that we can be a better version for this system that is not doing as well as we want it to. Mm. So I think as much as academically we must rise, Papa. innovatively, ah. we need to bring new things to the table. Mm. We need to bring more spirit to the table. Mm. Like a lot of us, we need to... Teams must become teams. Wow, that's good. Teams must just become teams. That's we cannot good. keep working as registrars alone, interns alone. We mm -hmm. cannot work at, and maybe we need to learn to share the glory. Mm -hmm. I think we're so bent up on P 
people must know that this is my team. Mm, I'm I the did this. That yeah. I won't let you bring your energy into this team, so we function a little bit better. Mm. So maybe share the glory a bit more. And see team a bit better. Mm. I think we are acknowledging what we need to do. The question now is how we're we going to do it. Yeah. How are we going to get that person who says joke to understand that? Now's your time to shoot a joke. Go. You're allowed to do it in this space. <laughs> sure. And I want to celebrate Young MD and becoming healers because this platform right here is going to reach doctors who we might never meet yes. on a face-to-face -face basis. And this might be the only touch point to understand that, oh my word, I'm actually a comedian in my heart. I had no idea this was okay. <laughs> Let me try it out at work tomorrow. And then it works. And then that becomes the thing. And that's what they bring to the table. And they elevate their team that way. So really, I think, can we give Young MD a round of applause? Because, hey, we are going to change the face of healthcare as we know it. So I think this is a big platform for people to, to re-educate the people. Mm. And I also think it's, it's more about showing them that it really is in you. Um, I love what you said, like we're losing the personal touch of medicine, we're yes, fighting to be these, these super sane humans yeah. like Vegeta, you know, I throw yeah. a ball, I heal you, I'm literally. awesome. I, do, I, do, I, do, I, do. I literally <laughs> feel like that. I'm like, but yes, you do. You're literally Vegeta. <laughs> but there's so much value in bringing the person of you. I mean, recently I, I, I spoke um, to Cuban students at their grad, and one of the things that has struck me personally is asking myself the question, you know, my degree has value, but what if I paid it to a mission? And what you did mm -hmm. here was just make missions mm -hmm. so simple. So many people feel like they live lives that are not purposeful because they don't have a clear idea of what it looks like to change the world. Mm -hmm. But just emphasizing that being yourself in a space that doesn't enough. have that is huge. Like mm -hmm. if you can bring humor in a place mm -hmm. that's tense and hard, you really are saving lives. You're putting a smile on people's face. You're making it easier to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. You're making people consider leaving a little less. You're making people wonder, okay, so maybe if it's like, maybe it's it's not me, it's the block. When it's over, I'll, mm -hmm. you know, Get I'll manage. Mm -hmm. And I think that's such an important point to emphasize. And again, I agree with the thought that we need to show people how and showing them that there's permission to be themselves in healthcare and learning as young doctors how to create spaces where you have permission to be yourself. And it's also something that I think I'm excited to see happen. Yeah. Um, so ladies, we are at the final, final part, which is um, releasing. I know you personally, and so I know that um, this last R is something you're both invested in doing. And so maybe the, the idea, which I think we've already done through conversation, um, is sharing strategy on how you release this to other people. Um, and I think for you hugely, you be yourselves, like you immerse yourselves in the space and you're fully yourself in the space. So what is the one thing you could say to someone who really doesn't know what it looks like to, after hearing this conversation, go and be themselves in the space? What's the one piece of advice you can share with them on how to do that starting tomorrow? Okay, so for me, I think the first thing you need to do is you need to spend time with yourself in order to know yourself and to know what it is that you can bring to the table. You need to know your strengths, you need to know your weaknesses. And it's important because when you know your strengths, they show you, you bring them up in the space to bring up the team. When you know your weaknesses, you know that that's what you need to work on. And when you identify somebody who's strong at what you're weak at, you pull that person in closer so that you can elevate together. Absolutely. So my advice to everyone, I don't think you can exist as a doctor in the South African healthcare system and not do personal development because you are going to crumble. The system is too hard. It will consume you or you're going to leave. Something will happen. Personal development is working on yourself. It's, if that's for you, is going to church, reading the Bible, joining a prayer group or prayer community. It's therapy, seeing a therapist, seeing a psychologist, you know. It's coloring in a coloring book, guys. It's going, going into a space where you're just by yourself. You think critically about what's going on, you reflect on what's going on, you try and dig deep and find out what is it that you're here for, what is your purpose in life, what is it that you can bring to the table, what change can you evoke. Think about those things, spend time with yourself, just reflect, 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 
and you'll find that all your strengths will come up and it will be well received by people when you're on yourself in that space. I know you a little bit as so I know I can draw more out of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Would it, you yeah. share your strategy for personal development? By that I mean, yeah. what do you do on an everyday? Because I think what helps people yeah. and what, what releases really... strategy is steps. Mm -hmm. So you've explained so beautifully to us what that looks like. Yeah. Now tell us your how, because you have a how, I know okay. that. So for all intents and purposes, my how is not going to be your how. Everybody's right. how is different. Right. So my how is 3 a.m. wake up for a prayer and a young praise and worship session. 3 a.m. everybody's asleep. It's you and Jesus and we are trumping demons at that hour. So 3 a.m. <laughs> is the hour, right? Wake up at 5 o'clock. I listen to personal development every single mo uh, morning. That's like motivation. I love um, Dr. Eric Thomas. So I listen to Dr. Eric Thomas. He basically just tells you you're a beast. You're going to kill it. You've got this. Not so when I get to work, I'm like, ah. <laughs> Literally, I have a hype session every morning, basically play music, dance, sing, I record videos, motivate the people around me, share the energy, they give me back the energy, I make sure that I eat in the morning, very, very important to get the fuel going, go to work, come back home, make sure that I read the Bible, I do some um, coloring in, just slow music, coloring in, thinking about what happened today, I journal a lot write down what happened. A lot of times people share on social media and that might not be the right platform to get the response that you need. Right. But in your diary, you can write it out just how it happened, just how you feel and what you think about it. And in some other way, God will respond to you. He'll let you know, okay, this is okay. This is what you need to do next, etc., etc. So journal a lot as well. And I turn up having fun is like the thing that keeps me going. If I have three calls in a week, one night I need to party, I need to dance, <laughs> I need to release the energy. So for me, those are like all the things together that are my personal development and those are the things that keep me going. I think, um, I mean, what Randy has said is extremely important. Yeah. You need to be so aware of yourself yeah. so that you can be a better version of yourself. Mm -hmm. So that the parts of you that are hurting, the parts of you that are not okay, can be managed adequately throughout your day. Because some of the things can't be dealt with immediately. No. But if I'm aware that I didn't sleep well, because my son didn't sleep well, um, I'm aware I'm a bit, little bit tired, I can grab an extra coffee, you can alert your team with, oh guys, today's not that day, yeah. let's be great, kind yeah. of thing. So I think be, being self-conscious and being ready to be honest about who you are each day is extremely important and will help this process move a little bit better. I also think it's so important to fill your cup. Mm. I think everything that Randy says she does is literally fill that cup before you get to work. Absolutely. And if you're going to go into a place that is extremely draining, like the spaces we work in, if you don't fill your cup, you're going to come in empty, we're going to dig into your empty. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to take, yeah. because there is no yes. other way to serve. Yeah. To serve, you must give. Sure. And those you are serving will receive. Mm. But there's, you cannot serve empty. But if you do happen to arrive empty, we're still gonna take. Yeah. So I think people must really work hard sure. at, That's a lot. at mm. filling their cups. And find little cheats in the day. Grab a smile. Like, if you are seeing not enough people are smiling, don't fix my people. Like, genuinely smile. Until somebody's like, what? And you're like, I just wanted to change your mood. So I think be intentional about creating a, a good vibe yeah. where we are. Mm -hmm. So be the change, exactly, that we want to see in the hospital. Yeah. I mean, everybody's the Grinch, because we don't have enough. Mm -hmm. But for a minute, be a sunflower. Mm -hmm. Like, recently, we've been praying for 21 days in most churches. Yeah. Yeah. And me and my friend, during this prayer time, we noticed that actually on the N12, you have sunflowers growing along concrete. Wow. There's no grass, wow. it's concrete. And then from nowhere, there's a sunflower. Yeah. And for us, I remember we were saying how, this is just to say all things are possible. Yeah. And our system is bad, our system is difficult, our system is when, 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 when. Yeah. Yeah. I am the sunflower in the system. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so actually encouraged by the fact that we can be the change that we want to see in the world everywhere. Like I've been saying, I really want to make a poster in any hospital that just says, you are doing well. Yeah. Yes, you. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what your job description is, 
you are actually doing well mm. and we thank you. Mm. I think people will receive that. And I actually wanted it signed by the HOD. Because I really, I don't believe she thinks people are doing a terrible job. Mm. But I also know that people feel that if you coddle people, then they become lazy. So maybe that's why our system is not built around congratulating and thanking people and lifting people. I think that's so messed up because who raises their children not coddling them? Yeah. That is a premise that yeah. suggests that love it's actually the doesn't, yeah. doesn't, heal. doesn't heal, doesn't restore. And I think it's also as we release ourselves, challenging ourselves to actually be not just a beacon of hope, but love intentionally in that yes. space. Because love is important. I mean, people run to relationships for it. People raise babies on it. So then you go to work and you we supposedly love our jobs, but it's not an environment we experience love at all. Yes. Mm. At all. And I mean, obviously, I mean, we're not saying OTT, whatever that is. <laughs> um, but, but I definitely think it's these little ideas as well that make it difficult to show up for the space. These ideas that a uh, good doctor can't be a good doctor if she's too loving. Yes. Um, or a good doctor isn't a good doctor if she's not beast and assertive. I think mm. it's, it's why I personally shied away from surgery. I was like, mm, can't do it because, wow. Um, these, these too much these, personality yeah needed. or or i'm not that and i don't want to be that I, I don't want to be hard i don't want to be um not fragile i don't want to not be women um and so i think it's important as well to, to give people permission to be themselves and you guys have shared so so beautifully on what it looks like to forgive thank you for teaching me i learned mm. uh, about the fact that you know, the system is not, yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> the system is not, as I think I, I find myself as well in that, in that um, mentality where I'm pointing to the system as people, as, organize, as organizations rather than people, um, and as past people who don't have an impact to now, but actually I'm also the system now. Um, me being there today is being in the system. You yes. being there today yeah. is being in the system. Mm -hmm. And it's so important to be cognizant of that every day. So thank you for taking a journey with us to becoming a healer. We release you to go and be the mark of forgiveness in that space. Um, in the ways you've explained will make sense to you. And I hope more than anything, it ignites conversation, it challenges people, and it challenges us to ask, what else do we need to put in those bags other than the stethoscopes that we pack every morning, the mm -hmm. lipstick we put in there, the mm -hmm. Vaseline. <laughs> because, True. Um, but to really ask ourselves what else can I take is it my humor is it my joy is it my peace that I can add to the space that can make a difference so thank you for joining us on Becoming Healers and go forth and become healers Amen <laughs> Thank you Hi guys, you just watched the first episode of Becoming Healers and we really hope to bring you more content with more health professionals across various disciplines. Our hope for South African Healthcare is that you would challenge yourselves to have hope and be an answer in this space. We cannot possibly expect to assist people in their journeys towards healing if we are comfortable with the dysfunction of our service. So we release you all to go out there and learn what it takes to not just be a health professional in this space because the space will require more from you. Come and join us as we journey to learning how to become healers.